Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 release Psycho Goreman, which is a Shutter exclusive and is coming to Shutter May 20th, which is a Thursday. Now, this review is going up before that, and because it's a film that's just hitting Shutter, and I'm putting the review up ahead of time, no spoilers here. So, I don't really think it matters spoilers or not. I won't do spoilers, but it doesn't really matter. To be honest, there's not a lot story-wise to the film. I mean, it does get kind of intricate story-wise when it comes to one aspect of the film, like some backstory, but for the most part, the actual film doesn't cover a lot of story, and I think that's very intentional, and that's fine, because I actually like this film, as a lot of people like this film. It's very specific, though. Some people may hate this film. Some people may really love this film. I quite liked it. You need to know what you're getting into, uh, to a degree, so you have to be fine with this. So... Psycho Gorman, written and directed by Stephen Kostansky, who also did Manborg, Father's Day, Leprechaun Returns, and The Void, which I love The Void. I have a review for it on my channel. Um, I'd say in comparison between The Void and Psycho Gorman, I like The Void more, but Psycho Gorman is close. Like, it, it's very, very close. Quality-wise, how good it is wise, all that stuff. They're just very different. So I'm going to tell you real quick, there are a few references. Now, be on the lookout for these specific references. This ruins nothing. Nothing. They're vague. I'm not going to tell you where they are. There is a reference to uh, the creator of Dungeons & Dragons, Gary Gygax. There is a reference to Kostansky's short film, Biocop. There is a reference to Jurassic Park. So be on the lookout for those. Once again, coming to Shudder on the 20th of May, Thursday. So quick synopsis. Basically, a otherworldly being who is super evil and powerful is on Earth and is discovered by a brother and sister who are young kids, and they have some sort of a relationship with this creature, and then things happen. So that's about as much as I'm going to say. Based off of that, you can probably surmise there isn't a lot of story. It's mainly about practical effects and comedy and gore, which has it in spades. It has all that stuff in spades. So, yeah, I'm a fan. It strikes a fun tone immediately, and the music is a lot of fun. That's one of the big things. I love the music. Not only is it good music, it's fun music. It keeps you jazzed. It keeps things upbeat. Um, especially during certain types of scenes, there's some real awesome guitar shredding, which I'm a fan of guitar shredding. I literally will go onto YouTube and watch, uh, clips of Herman Lee, one of the guitarists from, um, the, the band Dragon Force. He actually has a, I think he's on Twitch, his own like Twitch channel where he talks to other people who shred and, um, yeah, they just like shred back and forth. It's pretty awesome. You should check that out if you're into it. Uh, there's gore within the first 10 minutes. They waste no time getting into the good stuff, the gore. The comedy is immediate as well, and the comedy is often, and it's actually legitimately funny. I didn't have many moments where I was like laugh out loud type funny, but all, none of the moments fell flat for me either. So that's one of the best things. And I will say it does take a lot to get me to laugh out loud when I'm watching a film by myself, and I was watching this on my own with my screener. So yeah, so the, the comedy is well done, I think. Uh, the acting of Nita Jose Hanna. I'm sorry, I probably messed that up. The girl who plays Mimi in the film. I think it's Nita Jose Hanna. I'm sorry if I messed that up. She is a delight. She brings so much extra to her character. I think her character is well written. All the characters are well written, but I think her character is well written, but I think her ability and her acting style takes it to that next level. And I think. She kind of makes the film for me personally because she delivers a lot of the good comedy and she does it so well and she does it with such just an awesome personality and so much sass and just confidence and it's it's refreshing to see and I'll be interested to see where she goes from here because she has a bright future based off this performance, I think. Uh, but the acting in general is good. She just really stands out. There's good comedy, like I said, a uh, lot of creatures. And a lot of practical effects. They did not skimp on this. Now, I was very um, surprised to see that Kostansky did this film because when he was doing The Void, and I talk about it in my review video, 
apparently his experience was so bad. He said the only good thing about that experience was the actors. The actors were all really great to work with, but with all their practical effects, they had so many problems on set. He said it was a nightmare, and it seemed like, from what I was reading, that he was thinking about never having anything to do with that level of practical effects again. Because he doesn't like this whole CGI thing. He likes to keep things practical. Um, so I was surprised when I saw that this was coming out and it was Kostansky. I was like, okay, wow, I guess he kind of stepped back from it for a little bit and was like, no, I think I should continue doing stuff like that. And good, very good. The CGI that's used is blended in well at times, but it actually looks really wonky at other times. Now, this is usually a problem for me, but because of the tone of the film and because of the comedic aspect of it and how ridiculous and kind of over the top it is, I don't really mind the wonky CGI. It seems to fit to a degree, so that's okay. Um, not a big problem there. Uh, a lot of the creatures that show up, and there are a good amount of creatures in this, really interesting designs. You could just like sit there and stare at them on screen for quite some time. They put a lot into it. There's a lot of work in this film, and uh, yeah, it shows. It definitely shows. There are a few audio issues. Now, I don't know if this had to do with the screener copy I was listening or I was watching, but I had some issues where there were like audio pops at certain times and also some eight, some of the ADR that they did were off with with syncing with people's mouths. And then the other big thing is and this happens with a lot of films, I just hate it. Wild kind of volume swings, like one part will be like a little bit kind of soft so you have to turn the volume up and then like the next part it's like crazy loud so then you have to turn it down so I hate having to do that when I'm watching a movie I want to be able to set it at one volume and go through the whole movie without having to grab the remote or whatever I'm watching on and move the volume around so or if I have to move it move it once and we're done but yeah so that kind of bothered me a little bit and but once again like I said I don't know it may have just been the screener copy I got I don't know you, people, you can let me know in the comments. If you saw it and there were no audio issues, let me know. Because I have a feeling that maybe it's just a screener copy. There's a good clash between personalities uh, and realities of the characters of Mimi and Psycho Gorman, who I'll, is referred to as just PG, um, which is a good way to kind of be... Which is funny because this film is certainly not PG, so the fact that his, you know, his abbreviation is PG I think is funny. But um, yeah, that kind of clash between Psycho Gorman and Mimi is a great part of the film. Now, on the subject of Psycho Gorman specifically, got annoying to me the way he talks. It's not necessarily his accent. It's a little bit of, of his accent of how he talks, but it's mainly his word choices and how he chooses to string sentences together. It got annoying to me. I, I know there are a lot of people who probably won't have a problem with it, but it's just a personal thing for me. Just the way he was talking, the fact that it kept going down that same, you know, line of talking, it just got annoying and really wore me down over time. I was just like, I could do without this. Just kind of like speak a little more normally, please. But I, I know it's a character thing. And like I said, it's just a personal thing for me. I'm sure a lot of people are just like, no problem. Don't care. Um... There isn't much in the line of story, like I said. It's about the practical effects, the creatures, the comedy, the absurdity, the gore, all that stuff. And like I said, it has it in spades. It does a great job with that stuff. And you also need to know that this movie reminded me of the movie The Giver from the 90s. So if you know about The Giver, there's a lot to that. It seems like it was kind of... The Giver was kind of the the initial idea, and then they kind of built something off of that in a sense. And I actually think that The Giver had a TV series as well in the 90s. I might be wrong. Someone can fact check me on that and let me know. But it's been a while since I've seen The Giver. But when I was watching this, I was just thinking, dude, this is reminding me a lot of The Giver. So if you're hearing me say this now and you love The Giver, you're going to love Psycho Gorman. It's like an, a big update, so... Yeah, anyway, so that's pretty much all I have to say. Obviously, I enjoyed this film. I think they did a really good job. Now, as far as ratings go, I was be I'm between three and a half and four, but between how big they went with all the creature designs and the practical effects and that the acting of um, Nita Jose Hanna, who played Mimi, 
I gotta bump it to the four. I think it it feels right at a four. There's a lot of work that went into this. There's a lot of love that went into this film too. And I think a lot of people who love this type of film, and you'll see what I mean when you watch it, are going to go nuts over it and they're gonna wanna watch it numerous times. It is fun. So anyway, um, would love to hear people's comments. Once you've seen it, go ahead and put some comments down there. Spoilers are fine. Go ahead with spoilers in the comments and we'll just talk about it, get nerdy about it. But do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button if you can, and you can because it literally takes a second. That's your best way to let me know that you like this video or you like any video I've ever done. And that helps really to motivate me. It really does keep me going. Every time I see I get a new subscriber, I look at the email because I get email notifications for that. I look at who the subscriber is. I think to myself, thank you to this person. That is awesome. And it makes me feel good. And it drives me forward because I'm like, this person cared enough about some content that I put out there that they wanted to thank me. So thank you. Uh, also hit the notification bell button and that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new videos, whether it's a no spoiler review like this, one of my way more in-depth uh, spoiler, spoiler packed and analysis packed reviews or unboxing haul video, any of that. But regardless, I really do thank you for checking this out, taking your time to do that. Until next time, keep it brutal.